good morning guys. Um it's Juanita, also known as She Spins and Del Quan. And my desk is messy again, but just bear with me. I got some quick tips for you guys today, the spinners out there, as well as um any fiber artists, knitters, whoever, um, that uh might be having trouble identifying a the um diameter or the size of a yarn that they have in their stash. You might have lost the label, that happens all the time. Or if someone made it gave giving it to you and it didn't have a label that came with it and you're not quite sure what um, size yarn it is. If you have um, known yarn samples like one thing that I recommend doing is making sample cards. Just take an index card, wrap a few strands of your known sample of sport weight, of DK, of lace, of fingering, um, of worsted and bulky on their own card from a known manufacturer and um, that way you'll always have a card. You can just hold a card up and you can compare that particular yarn to it and that'll make it easy and you don't want to make sure you wrap it. You don't want it to be under tension because when you wrap it under tension, then that's going to make the yarn thinner than what it is when it's in its nap in its relaxed state. So you want to wrap it loosely or tape it to the card loosely so that the yarn remains in its natural state and isn't pulled thin. Um, that's one thing you can do uh, so that you will have an easy go-to guide to compare um, an unknown yarn to. The other thing you can do is called wraps per inch. Now, on Ravelry, um, they have a page that has the yarn, the American, I guess it's, what's it called, American Yarn Standards Guide or something like that. And um, I'll put that link in the show notes. The link's not a show, but I'll put the link in the notes below. Um, So it's called the standard yarn weights and it gives you the ply for the UK, New Zealand, Australia, where it's a one ply, two ply, three ply, four ply, five ply, eight ply, ten ply, blah, blah, blah. And then it'll give you the wraps per inch, the average wraps per inch and how many stitches per inch, um, four inches is equivalent to ten centimeters. And then it would give you the yarn standards name for that. Like a lace thread is a zero lace weight. Cobweb lace is a zero lace weight. And that's, that would be on the label. You can see like this little yarn ball. And then in the center it would have a number. It would be like zero, one, two, three, four, five, and 6. And that would let you know immediately looking at those numbers what size yarn you're buying. Um, DK weight is... is um, it says eight ply, but I've never purchased it. I think it's like a, a UK and Australian thing. And it's 11 wraps per inch, and it should be 22 stitches per four inches. So let's say you need a ruler. And, and so it would be 10. It would, you need a ruler, and you need an inch on that ruler. Okay? And um, so I guess, let me see, something real quick. Because I do have people from other countries who watch me, surprisingly. So, so one e inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. So if you're in a country that uses metric, then you would use the centimeter side and you would go up to two and a half on the for the metric okay alright so and what you're going to do right here I have a ball of yarn that I wrapped and I don't think I had a label because this yarn was given to me so I didn't have a label for it when it was given to me so what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this and I'm showing you on a ruler, but there are also tools that, as a spinner that I have that I use 
I have this one. It's called a wraps per inch tool. It's one inch between these two points, and I will wrap it around the circle. Um, and I also have this one, which it also has like a crochet hook and needle gauge, as well as if you turn it over from this point to this point is a wraps per inch tool. And I got this from Carrot Sticks off of um, Etsy. All right. So you can also get a wrap per inch tool, which is good to have because it's less unwieldy than holding a ruler to try to do this. All right, my spinning wheel is below my desk, so I'm trying not to get this yarn wrapped all over my spinning wheel. Okay, so basically you're going to start, and you're not going to hold this yarn tight. You want the yarn to be in natural state, which is relaxed. So you're going to start, and you're just going to wrap it. Now you could just wrap it for half an inch, you know, a quarter of an inch, and then multiply that by four for your wraps per inch. So this is three wraps for a quarter inch, so times four is twelve. So it's twelve wraps an inch. So according to my chart. 12 wraps per inch is a sport weight yarn, which this is a sport weight yarn. So, that's the easy way to do it. To figure out what your yarn um, is that doesn't have a label. Uh, now, the other tip I have for you guys today is for the hand spinners. Okay, this tape is called surveyor's tape or landscaping tape and it's non-adhesive you have to make sure you get the non-adhesive type of this tape and what I've been doing is because I can write on this with the sharpie and as soon as I finish spinning my yarn and I skein, apply it and skein it I can put one of these tags up there I don't know if you guys can see that and my handwriting is horrible so so you can take one of these tags and put the information about the yarn you're plying up there. When you finish plying it, put a little poke a hole in there and tie it to some of your one of your ties. And you can wash your yarn with this tag on that yarn. And you don't have to worry about forgetting what you spun while it's drying. For instance, if you spun like a bunch of brown fiber that was similar in color but you know some of it was a pack of wool blend some of it was maybe a, um, a pack of mohair blend or something but the colors are so close you can't remember and this is happening to me what it was you're spinning because I spin all the time every day I have over a hundred skeins of hand spun right now in two baskets that I am currently putting these tags on <laughs> For the ones that weren't tagged and then I'm replacing the old tags on some of the other ones with this these because I need to wash the fiber because I just spun it threw a tag on it threw it in the basket I didn't finish it so I'm, I'm in the process of of finishing those fibers getting them washed getting them labeled and then after I do this I figure it's gonna take me about about two weeks to do that then after I do that and everything's dry then I will be taking pictures of everything and putting it in the Etsy store. Um, and I have to wait for it to dry so I can get the true yarn gauge on it. Um, so I know if it's going to be. Because some yarns, they bloom. They poof up after you wash them. Because air is getting back in between those spaces. I spin worsted. So I, I remove air as I'm spinning. I don't spin it. Um... What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Can't think of the word right now. Because I don't spin that way. I don't spin woolen. That's the word I'm looking for. Woolen yarns are lighter and airier yarns because you are not you are not removing it. You are not smoothing down as you spin. You're simply letting it go. 
and you're not smoothing it down. So that's a woolen yarn. It's to be light and airy. And then to me, a woolen yarn is weaker than a worsted yarn. Um, I don't like spinning woolen. I don't. I don't feel like I'm in control of the fiber and stuff. And I can spin woolen, but I, I don't want to because I don't like the process. And so, and that's one of the things I had to learn is that you can't please everybody. But for spinning to be enjoyable for me, I have to please myself. Okay. So I had these are my hole punchers that I use on my business cards when I attach my business card to the the yarn I spun. They're on my desk. This is a hat that I just finished last night for my for um my um oh, my keys are there. The women's over here. <laughs> I was looking for them. <laughs> for Jelena, who is my granddaughter. And uh I gotta take my stitch marker out. So she has a big head. So what I'm gonna do is now that I've spun it. I'm going to take some um, elastic and run it around the band and finish this hat for her. That way it'll be stretchy. I didn't want it. It's be like a little. It's a little um, um, tan for her. And um, so yeah, I didn't want it to be. Her head is big. The girl got a big brain. <laughs> so yeah. And then I was like yesterday. I was looking through um, some things, and I found. A bunch of these my small books or uh, pattern books and so I was looking through them I've just been doing a lot of organizing like you guys and so I was looking through these books and I just I thought about you know I got all these freaking books and they're nice to have as references and stuff but I haven't done hardly any patterns in some of these books um so what i decided to do was i downloaded every pattern that i've ever ever purchased and there's about 40 of them and what i'm going to start doing is once i finish my scarf and these gloves is each new pattern that i start it will have to be one of the patterns that i purchase that is my new rule so yeah I also found these and I have the whole set and I haven't used them yet and they are af crochet afghan with their, their afghan hooks and, this and they have the balls on the end of them well I that's the other thing I'm going to start doing is doing more Tunisian crochet so that I can use these. I love the tips on these hooks. So I'm going to look in back on wherever I bought them from. I think I got them from off of Amazon. So I'm going to look on my Amazon and see if they have just crochet hooks because it's bamboo. They're very nice and smooth, but I like the way because it's flat, right? It's a little bit flat, but not really, really flat. So it, I like the way they feel in my hand they're not putting pressure or anything on the side because I have big hands and it's hard finding crochet hooks with long um that are long which make makes it easier for me to use. I don't have that piece you know pressing into my palm and making my hand sore and stuff like that. So so yeah so that's how my desk got so messy. Uh I just want to bring you guys those, those few tips and tell me what you guys are doing to get organized and your plans for your yarns. Um, and see, this is how I know that was a sport weight. This is my known sport weight sample right here that I need to put on my card. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and these are, my daughter has, one of my daughters has dreadlocks. So these are her hair bands and she wants me to make her, her make you know crochet around them for her so that's what I'm gonna do she didn't pick out which color she wanted yet done and this is trash I need to go through separate the wheat well some of my business cards I need to put back I gotta put them in our business card holders see the ones from Winswept Farms y'all know I love these people I rep them every chance I get 
And then of course you know there's art stuff up under there which it shouldn't be up under there because it's probably smearing them. This is one of those pencil sharpeners that one side makes let me see. Da -da. One side makes a long um, point and the other side sharpens the sharpens the point. So I, I really like this pencil sharpener. But I also have a point sharpener as well. Um so, so that's it. This is really too long. I'm just rambling now. I'm probably upset to people. But that's all that's going on. I've been doing a lot of spinning, as you know. Uh, I've applied some of it. I've already, with a new tagging system, it's already soaking in the wool wash, um, being, being washed. And I'm just loving this new system. And uh, so here is down some. That was a battery that fell. Here's some brown Shetland that's waiting to be applied. This is some cream alpaca that's waiting. To be, it's almost a, a oatmeal color, but it's uh, this stuff spun like butter. I really enjoy spinning this. It's waiting to be applied. And then I have some black and white Sheet Shed Studio meal ends from the Brown Sheet Company that's waiting to be applied. And I think this bottle might have more than one color in it because I, I have some brown alpaca remnants that were in one of them and then the other one I have is some white alpaca and then I have some um, fiber that uh, me and my husband dyed some punta and punta fiber if you want some punta fiber go over to Sheep Shed Studio and order you some this stuff spins very well it makes a really nice lace really 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 nice fiber so yeah so that's all that's going on with me today. Um, you guys take care, and I'll probably be on later this week um, doing an art hangout. So take care. I'll, I'll announce it first so you guys will know when it's going to be. And let me know if you want to participate.